Hey there, this is Dan. You're watching the Salty Sea, and I have a Warband Showcase video for you today. Uh, yesterday, I hosted a tournament here in Minnesota, and we had some incredible Warbands show up. So I will talk about the competitive side of that tournament and uh, you know who won and why. But for now, I just want to do a, a hobby showcase video because some of the stuff on display was truly amazing. I got to put a bunch of the Warbands into my light box. I'm still learning how to use the light box, as you'll see. But let's uh, do this showcase because I'm really excited. These were a couple sweet rock cut rock gut trogoths uh that my buddy nick painted he is a phd student at the u he didn't want to put the rest of his warband in here but they looked really striking in in the context of the whole warband i just really liked everything he had going on and the way that they kind of contrasted with each other and a lot of other folks liked them too so yeah a fun one to start on let's uh let's take a look at uh, this is Avery's Skaven Warband. Really cool stuff. Um, this is an old Forge World sculpt that he used for his Hell Pit Abomination. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now you can take a look at some of the other rats he had going too. Um, Avery went 3-1 and one with this list, by the way. I'll talk about that in the in a more competitive video, but for now I just want to showcase, uh, he's got two Death Masters here, and again, just really want to look at this incredible Hell Pit Abomination that he painted, and yeah, just just a really cool old sculpt to track down, and Warcry is the perfect place to, uh, to do that. So, you know, regardless of uh, what folks feel about monsters in the game, I, I do think from a hobby perspective it is cool to see them from time to time. Um, because this, this warband just looked great, and uh, the monster looked great as well. Keep moving right along here, and this is one of the highlights. There were three warbands that really, um, with the painting categories with in terms of best warband, there were three warbands that were really duking it out, and here's one of them. This is before I figured out what the light box is good at showing and what the light box isn't good at showing. Uh, so the glare that I put here on the two Fellwater Trogoths is pretty rough. You'll see in some future videos I kind of play around with better ways to deal with the glare, but just incredible stuff that he achieved. I think I have a better video here. He's got, yeah, here we've a little bit less glare here coming closer up, but he did these incredible 3D prints for his uh, all of his goblins and his fungoid cave shaman, where they're just all Morlocks or Murlocks. And then these are actual GW Fellwater Trogoths, right? And the Murlocks just fit so perfectly with the Trogoths that it's just this perfect, cohesive, Fellwater themed Gloom Spite Gits warband. I mean, I this is what Warcry is all about, right? Because you could never make, I shouldn't say never, I'm sure you could, but. It's just so rare to see people trying something this ambitious for a full army. But for Warcry, you can do incredible stuff like this. Absolutely amazing. And let's just, let's look at it again. Um, Eric Christensen, by the way, is the person who did this. Um, incredible work. Super cool warband. Uh, just a full concept executed from start to finish. And... I mean, what more can you ask for than that? Absolutely loved that crew. So let's keep it moving. Let's uh, take a look at this Daughters of Cain list. Um, I kind of failed figuring out how to make my camera work with the light box here. You can see the uh, actually really incredible basing that he did on the display board. The basing is in perfect focus and the, <laughs> the poor snake ladies are uh, impossible to see. Uh, I'm really sad that I didn't do this one justice, that I couldn't figure out how to make it focus on the right thing because um, the blending of different colors on the Bloodrack Medusa was really quality here. And a lot of people voted for that Bloodrack in Best Single Model, um, deservedly so. And I think a lot of people also voted uh, you know, in, in the uh, sort of overall Best Warband category here. I thought it was really well put together. Um, 
I love, again, you can't see quite as well because I didn't focus well on it, but the, the Stormcast ally uh, worked really nicely, kind of putting the green on the shield to fit with the Bloodrack Medusa. Um, again, you can't see just how well blended the highlighting was on the Medusa's skin to make her look like um, this otherworldly creature. So that's, that's on me. Uh, sorry about that, AJ, but a uh, really amazing warband. I talked with AJ a little bit about kind of strategy and, and what we can do to f figure out Daughters of Cain. I'll put that in a more competitive video, though. As, as for now, just really amazing warband. Now I'm going to get to Dion's Gloom Spike Gifts. Um, this is another one where I kind of struggled with glare in the light box. I'm sorry, I'm still figuring this thing out. But really cool highlighting on the squigs. It's it's always wonderful to see box art done, like box art style just done really, really well. You know, Games Workshop, we give them a lot of grief for sort of a lot of folks will sometimes say like, oh, I like that faction, but I don't like the way the heavy metal team paints it. Well, um, a lot of these those color schemes do really show nicely in person. And here's uh, Dion who did a really good job painting heavy metals, you know, heavy metal gloom spike gets basically. Um, and I really love it. So this was me just trying to figure out if maybe changing the angle would help with uh, the glare that I was getting off my light box. It did help a little bit. You can see uh, some of the some of the squigs here. You can see how he put a lot of work into into highlighting uh, pieces of the musculature on these weird meatball animals. You have to put a lot of work into squigs to make them not just look like little meatballs, and he did that, and I'm really impressed. So uh, great job, Dion, and I, I love this warband. Um, now we're going to go to Josh, who brought a Cygor, and uh, it was really nice. This was when I tried to switch colors. Uh, I was getting really b bad glare on this one when I was trying it in black as well, and the blue just worked a lot better. So I love it. I love the detailing on all the little the bits and bobs that are on the Cygor. I love the way he shaded the rock. Um, I love well-painted rock. Um, it, <laughs> there's just something that's really a joy out of someone who really manages to make stone look good. Uh, we were also chatting. I kind of saw this or was struck by this when I was kind of turning the model around. Um, the Cygor should get to throw two rocks before it runs out of ammo. Uh, if you don't know, in, in Warcry, the, um, the Cygor, you can throw a boulder, and then you have to use an ability to pick up a new boulder before you can throw it. But he's got two boulders. You know, he's got one around his neck, one on his... Um, <laughs> one in his hands. He should be able to throw two boulders before he runs out of ammo and has to try again or has to uh, open one up. Just a little uh, aside there. Um, I love the kind of blending on the horns there. You also see, hopefully I showed it, but really incredible work on the sort of um, crotch skull, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah, this, this little crotch skull here in the center. Um, Really amazing work there, really amazing work highlighting the sort of musculature here while keeping it this dark, um, bestial, you know, dark tone, but making sure that all of the muscles and the ribs and all of that are picked out. Um, just a really beautiful, really beautiful piece with a lot of attention to detail, and I love to see it. Um, now let's get into this incredible Seraphon warband. Um, hopefully I don't struggle too much with, yeah, there we go, with getting the focus right. But uh, every single model here was just done with an incredible level of detail. Um, you see the slight conversion work with the Annihilator's hammer to kind of give it this sort of otherworldly look to it that I thought was really incredible. The um, the leader sort of the leader is the skink priest here is done really beautifully let's take another look at that just seraphon skin that's had real time taken to it to bring out the kind of lifelike qualities of seraphon the the way that you could just find them in the wild is is really incredible um also there's a dwarf ally here that's really nice oh my god i didn't notice the pokeball 
I forgot about the Pokeball. The Skink Priest is carrying a Pokeball. Why? I don't know. You will have to ask Zach. Um, <laughs> somebody asked... I, I hope he's watching this so he'll comment below as to why the Skink Priest is carrying a Pokeball. I, <laughs> I could not love that anymore. Um, and a great choice for going into the Gnarl Wood too, where, you know, all kinds of monsters, you might meet them, weaken them down with your Warband, and then throw the Pokeball at them to capture them. Oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, just look at that thing. Anyway, I had been wanting to talk about this dwarf ally. Um, he's really cool. I don't know where he found that sculpt for that rune lord, but it fits perfectly. And um, I just loved also the freehand work on the on the Pterodon Rider and all of the sort of non-metallic metal and also just shading on the Annihilator. Um, those Annihilator sculpts are incredible and you can do really cool work with them. I love that he gave it a smaller shield. Um, I actually really like the base Annihilator shields, but the sort of little, um, I don't know what you call those, uh, little shields basically. Is it a buckler? I don't, I don't remember, but um, it, it looks great with him uh, and he looks a little bit more um, versatile. I think it's meant to be, because this is the two-handed Grand Hammer, I think it's meant to be just sort of he's, um, you know, still able to protect himself. And I think you could easily run this Annihilator as both, as the regular one-handed hammer or the Grand Hammer, and say, like, hey, look, here's my shield for the hammer and shield ones. Or it's like, hey, no, this is just a tiny buckler, but he can still wield the two-handed hammer this way. So really clever gaming conversion there, and then painted so well that uh, you don't even notice it's a gaming conversion until until you actually kind of think about it a little more. So really amazing warband. This guy actually won the tournament too for best general. So I can't wait to talk about some of the kind of list building and execution that he did on the table, but the, the incredible work he did off the table is also just amazing. Love that warband. Now I'm going to get into another one with just absolutely wild conversions to it. Uh, this um, Drukari Karadran Overlords list is amazing. He was he did an incredible job. Eric did of making it really clear what was standing for what. The two uh, Drukari, I think these are Drukari. I don't. Now I'm not so sure, but the two the two space elves with giant weapons, those were um, Aether Cannon uh, Thunderers, and then his leader was pretty clear which one, and then he had two Balloon Boys, uh, and it was pretty clear, like, those are the guys flying around on these little uh, robo-scarabs, I don't know what to call them, uh, but really cool where he took the... Um, he took the support pieces that he was using to hold them up, and he, I mean, just incredible idea here, but you just cover them in fluff to where they look like exhaust coming from the scarabs. Um, incredible conversion idea there. And just, yeah, I, I love it. Again, full counts as forces like this. It's just so much easier to do this in Warcry than it is to do for a whole army. Very few people would put so much effort into making a whole army that is like this. But in Warcry, in, uh, and Kill Team 2, of course, and I'm sure that this is also probably his Kill Team as well. Um, but you can, you can do this, you can put this incredible effort into your pieces and, um, and it really shows and it, it really pays off and it's sort of, um, a little less daunting. Also, the leader, the the highlighting on the sword to get the power weapon right, um, the face of the leader. I hope I zoom in on it again. I can just re... Um, yeah, just look at the face on the leader and the hair. Um, just an incredible paint job, an incredible conversion job. Um, I was really blown away by this warband. First, when I saw it online uh, heading to the tournament, and then seeing it in person um, is really amazing. And I'm really glad I switched to the blue for the light box because uh, it <laughs> it shows better in this blue and oh man I just I can't say enough about this warband I was really really impressed with the 
with the hobby on display here um, with just the painting and conversions and everything. Now I want to get into these iron golems. Really cool work here. I uh, I don't know why it didn't occur to me to put them in the red light box. Uh, I, I don't know why I went back to the black here. Uh, so that's on me. I'm going to, I'm going to get better at using light boxes. That's my, uh, that's my main resolution for 2023. Uh, but the lava armor that he did on the iron golems here is just incredible. Um, the way it's, it works for every single armor piece. Every single one of these looks like it is just hot off the forge. Like they, it, they didn't even let it cool. They just strapped it on right away. They're walking in lava. You might say that they would be burnt up. I disagree. <laughs> um, really amazing use of the crackle paint there to make that work. Uh, this guy was actually in the finals and took second in the tournament. So this is another one where uh, there's a lot to talk about as far as innovative list building um, and uh, and kind of the skill of execution there. But Iron Golems are really good in game. Sorry, this is not a competitive video. Uh, so let's talk more about just uh, that incredible lava shield. I actually uh, voted for the Iron Legionnaire. I can't remember which one, uh, but <laughs> for best single model, I actually voted for the Iron Legionnaires because uh, or I think I put them like fourth, I think, um, one of them overall just this iron legionnaire just because i was so impressed with the lava shields i thought it was an incredible showcase of the overall design um but it really works when you when you look at each individual golem uh and the way that he put the sort of love and care into every single piece of armor that they're wearing is just really amazing from a hobby perspective and i i just can't say enough about um about that you might, you know, be mad that the Slaughter Priest and the Master Molder don't fit there, but I don't think you should be because, you know, you have to, we're still trying to win at the end of the day. And I, I do think that these are really well painted on their own, in their own right as well. Um, so just overall a really cool warband to see. All right, now we're going to get to the last one. This was Vint. Um, incredible job by all the people who brought, uh, what do you say? Oh, Jade Obelisk, uh, because it's really hard to paint that fast. These have not been out for very long. Um, but Vint, I wanted to talk about him because he um, did an incredible job scoring quest points and just making sure he hit all his quests so that he, uh, even though he went one and three with this warband, he absolutely dominated the... Um, the narrative scoring and won the narrative MVP or like the champion of the Gnarlwood. And it's so fitting that a um, specific bespoke warband was the one that, you know, scored all the, the narrative quests in game. Um, for, for those who don't know, I basically gave everyone branching quests and you had to complete different objectives in game that had nothing to do with the competitive scoring of the quest or of the mission. And, uh, and Vint did the best job of anyone at doing that. He scored seven quests over four rounds, which is really amazing. Um, the other thing I love here is he's got the, you know, the red people, but then he chose to have all of the demons be in sort of a more standard Zinch blue. Um, I'd love to hear more about his sort of concept with that, but I think it's it's clear, right, that because the idol arc is blue too, this isn't just bringing in a Zinch ally, but he's got, you know, one red idol arc and one blue one as if maybe the red idol arc is the one that's always been with them and then this blue one is a second idol arc that's joined up and brought a anyway you can you can get real sort of story there with the um with the kind of inclusion of having one idol arc match the the zinch ally still on the same base as them right so really cool stuff um i'm I can't wait to hear on their podcast his kind of story behind this warband and their, you know, their origin story and sort of what brings all of these together because this is such a um, a narratively driven warband and the fact that he then went out there and hit all of his uh, hit all of his narrative quests every time uh, also just adds to that and I um, and I just love that so uh, 
I'm just gonna, you know, click around on some of the favorite war bands, some of the most striking ones while I talk. But it was really cool to see um, all of the all of the hobby on display. There were things like uh, one person had a triple Korgarath list where uh, he didn't get to paint it, but um, he had a ton of conversions on his Korgaraths. And I can't wait to see it once it is painted. He had a, a bunch of Seraphon shields um, that were sort of tied to the Korgarath or sort of incorporated in a way that it looked like it could be the Korgarath skin, right? Because Seraphon shields have that knobbly finish. Actually, you can see perfectly here on the Saurus. They have that knobbly finish. So he had trimmed the spikes or he had put the spikes in places where it could be sort of the Korgarath's natural spikes and he kind of attached them to the Korgarath so that it looked like it was the skin and then he just said these Korgaraths have been mutated by falling into the spawning pools that are in uh that are sort of in the ruins in the middle of the Gnarlwood and so he just had these sort of Seraphon Korgaraths uh that were you know the rest of his corn force was corn but then the Korgaraths, they're the ones that fell into the spawning pool and they were sort of forever altered and um, just really cool stuff. And that was that was awesome. Um, so there was a Zinch uh, Demons Warband that I unfortunately didn't get in the light box. Uh, a lot of people voted uh, for that for one of the best painted uh, armies. And it was just done really striking with uh, really bright Zinch colors that was really cool to see. Um, I, we had a warband with two storm fiends in it that a lot of people loved. Um, there was a really beautiful, he didn't put his list out for voting. So I'm, I'm not sure if it was a commission painted or not. Um, must be because it was an, it was a really incredible and I wish I'd gotten it into the light box, but it was a really incredible, um, slaves to darkness list with a centurion marshal. And all of the armor plates had a really beautiful yellow to orange gradient um, that was done on each individual armor plate, had a yellow to orange gradient on it. And just mind-blowing warband. It must have been a commission job or, or else I'm sure he would have put it out there and it would have scored really high on the hobby voting. I, I don't know why I couldn't catch him to to get it into the light box to uh, to talk up whoever painted it, but really amazing one lots of really cool stuff on display one of my favorite things about warcry is how much effort you can see people put into just a small warband and uh and i can't wait to celebrate that more on the channel um i want to do a painting competition i've been kind of talking about this with my patrons about how cool it would be to showcase their work and you know the work of the community um i'm still figuring out how i'm going to uh sort of make the terms of that the way it's going to work but um keep an eye out on the channel i will do another one of these sort of warband showcases in the future uh trying to figure out my light box and uh in that video i'll sort of talk i'll announce the painting competition for real and uh, talk about how it's going to work um, because i just want to do more showcasing the incredible hobby that's uh on display in these competitive tournaments um yeah, just the way people can show off for each other is really amazing. I'll have more uh, the competitive side of how the tournament went, who, you know, who beat who and, and how, and, you know, how people were playing their warbands, all of that um, really important stuff. Uh, and then I'll also, you know, I actually have a lot of videos in the hopper right now. So until then, may all your rolls be crits.